Hey, hello, I'm Christine from Rushing River Apiaries and I am once again out at one of our bee yards. This one's starting to get familiar somehow. This is always where I end up uh, trying to film a little content. But today I am going back through our hives. I'm going to do a bit of grading now that they've had a couple weeks of brooding up. Um, so I'm going to kind of assess where they're at. It'll help us decide how many splits we can make, how many queens we need to order in to make those splits um, in order to sell our nukes this spring. I stuck the energizer back on the fence so the bears are going to start waking up now that the snow is gone and the skunk cabbage is coming up. Um, so we're getting all of our energizers out and charged up. They're solar powered because our bee yards are remote. Um, so that will be going hopefully by the time I leave it'll be charged up and I can turn it on. And yeah, I'll just kind of show you what I'm seeing in our hives as we're going along. This has been a brutally cold, wet few weeks for our bees. Um, we figure we're between two and three weeks behind normal. <laughs> so our clusters are looking smaller than we would like at this time of year. It's also cold today, um, not freezing, but it's about five degrees Celsius, which is like maybe mid forties Fahrenheit. Uh, so I'm not going to pull any frames. That's too cold to be pulling frames. I'm going to pop a pollen patty back on the top if they have chewed through what we already gave them. And then I'm going to uh, be looking up at the cluster from the bottom. So if they're in two boxes, then kind of like splitting the boxes so I can look up at where they mostly are going to be in that top box. Or if they're in one box, then I'll lift it up off the bottom board and have a look from below. Clusters, when it's cold and the bees are in a cluster, uh, look a lot smaller than on a warm day when the bees are spread out across the box. And last time I was here, it was a really warm day. Um, so that's why I'm back today. It will give me a more accurate picture of the actual size of um, the brood nest that those bees are trying to keep warm in there. Uh, that's more information than just looking down from the top and seeing bees spread across the top and being like, oh great, I got a lot of bees. Uh, so I'll kind of show you what I'm seeing as we go along. I get quite a few questions about our electric fence setup. So I'll just quickly show you. This is the energizer that we use. It's solar powered um, and it holds quite a good charge once it is charged so that we can go a few days of rain in our rainforest. And then we use um, five wires. Uh, number one, three and five are positive or they are charged. And then the middle two um, are like grounds. Uh, and they run out to a grounding rod. Um, they're not hooked up right now, so some things are just kind of hanging willy-nilly, but that is our setup all the way around our bee yards. You can see it running in the background there. I don't always go beekeeping when it's only five degrees out, but when I do, I keep my damn puffy vest on. Oh, it's cold out here. We got them. Right, so this one I have marked as a slow grower this spring, so I can see from the top, I mean, it looks like they're on maybe four frames, but it's always more telling to look up from the bottom and see if they're reaching the bottom of those frames. And that's actually quite encouraging that they are. So they're right to the bottom of one, two, three, four frames. Um, so definitely viable, but this one could use a little boost if we want it to give us some nukes in a month or so. This one I have marked as a strong hive, but again, it always looks better. Last time I was here, it was about 15 degrees or a little over 60, and uh, you can see they're wall to wall. So this is a little more telling on a cool day. And again, looking up from the bottom. Oh, very nice. They're in both boxes though. And if I see kind of where they're covering, they're on one, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half frames in the top. And then it looks like they're also getting down into the bottom um, and eating that pollen patty from the bottom too. So it looks like they have some brood down there. And also, ooh, they don't like it when I stick my hand in there. There's a uh, broken frame here, but that's a problem for another day because it's a little too cold to uh, be pulling frames right now. Close them back up. They've also chewed through their pollen patty and that's also a pretty good indication that they have lots of brood on the go because um, it's those nurse bees using that pollen to produce royal jelly to feed those little larvae. All right, this one again I have marked as strong. They look pretty good from the top. They've really eaten through most of their pollen patties. So I'm expecting about the same. Oop, there. This is a Formic Pro pad from last year. This is 
We haven't really done a full like wall-to-wall -wall go through of any of these hives yet this year. But we're still finding some treats. We'll clean that out to save the bees the hassle of doing it. Formic Pro is one of the treatments that is safe to leave in um, because the fumigant is all gone by the end of the treatment period. Um, treatments on the plastic strips like Apovar um, or Amitraz, you don't want to leave those in. That's what builds towards mite resistance, so you want to get those out as soon as the treatment's done. Usually the bees will clean out Formic pads if they're kind of in the way. So, what do we have here? We're looking for where they're right to the bottom. One, two, three, four. I can see lots of capped brood on that frame. Five and a half. And then they're dipping down into the bottom box there too. Um, looks like they had a pollen patty on there. I'm just peeking down. I don't see capped brood on those ones, so I think they're just kind of overflow down there for now, maybe cleaning it up. But nice strong hive for where we're at uh, this time of year. This one, judging just by the amount of pollen patty they still have left on there, are going to be a bit on the smaller side. Last time I just gave it a check mark saying queen's fine, brood on the go, um, but not really doing anything special. So let's have a look. And that still holds true. More formic pads to get out of there. So what do we got? They're kind of only on one, well, one, two, three, four, five, and capped brood right to the bottom, which is nice to see. So looks like they're picking up momentum. Um, I'm going to leave them in both boxes for now. Uh, some, you know, if there was no overflow down into this bottom box, then I would probably pull it. Um, I don't want to do that today and have to shake these bees or leave them out on the grass because it's a little on the cold side. So these guys just make the cut for keeping that bottom box on. Um, otherwise I would reduce them down to one. We are, except for a few hives, um, we're not at the stage of reversing boxes yet. The wind is having fun with me today. We're not at the stage of reversing boxes yet. Um, we like to see a little bit more newly emerged brood so that we know they're going to move right up into there. Look who's bee just pooped on my face. Okay, another one that I marked with a check mark, so I expect that they're going to look similar um, to the last one. Bees on six-ish frames. Oh, they're a little more up toward the top. One, two, three, four. Five. That's pretty darn standard, isn't it? Like to see them a little bit bigger, but it is what it is for this slow, cold spring. Okay, so here's a box looking from above. I'll zoom out so you see all ten frames there. So these are definitely clustered. It's cold. They've eaten a good chunk out of their pollen patties, though, and that tells us they have food on the go. And now I will uh, crack them open and look up from below to kind of show you the difference between looking from the top and the bottom. Okay, then when we crack from below, and I scooch that box back a bit so that I can open it right up and it doesn't fall off. Um, but then we can look up in and see that one, two, three, they're really only on three frames in there. So I'm going to remove this bottom box. Um, give them a little less work because they won't have to worry about keeping that warm and clean and guarded um, and hopefully these guys will rebound. Might check and see what they have on the go for brood here. So I took that bottom box off. These guys are down into one box now and I'm just going to have a peek at the brood they have on the go to make sure that there is no problem with the queen. Get these old pollen patties off. Um, by the way, and I feel the need to say this all the time because it's one of the big regional differences in beekeeping, if you live in a place with small hive beetle, don't put this much pollen patty on your hives. We are lucky enough to live in a place that doesn't have it, and so we can give them lots. But... Alright, let's get in here. Get it 
open brood on that one, but you can see a bit of a tapped brood pattern on this one. Not too bad. A little patchy, but most of the holes there look like larvae that are going to be kept any day now. So this population will grow. Let's see if I can spot. It's nice to see one patch with a nicer pattern on it. No, she's a little bit spotty. This queen will be there she is. The queen will be up for replacement this year, even though she's a beauty. Has warmed up a fair bit, still not ready to part with my down vest. Yeah, so they've only got brood going on that. We'll let two frames there. Need more time. Need more sunshine. I almost stick the Pollen patties back on them, out of the way. That's still plenty given the amount of brood they have. Close them back up. So the, uh, the weather's really been killing us this spring. Uh, next week it looks like there is some sun in the forecast and highs around 10, uh, which is about 60 Fahrenheit. Still not amazing weather, but it's usually a little bit warmer and some of, some of our bee yards under the sunshine. So hopefully they'll get out and be able to forage for some natural pollen uh, and maybe even a few flowers will start blooming. Uh, we need these bees to brood up so that we can sell our nukes this spring so here we go it's a ride